These are the ones who, living in the flesh, planted the church with their blood. They drank the chalice of the Lord and became the friends of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we honor the two great saints, Saints Peter and Saint Paul, on this solemnity of these princes of the church. Let us prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries of Christ's saving passion, death, and resurrection, and ask for the forgiveness of our sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul give us the noble and holy joy of this day, Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and wakened him, saying, get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, 
then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord, the Lord delivered, delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord, the Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord, Lord delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. <clears throat> A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation and the, the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim this gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. 
I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear in today's gospel, Peter confidently proclaiming that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus calls each of his apostles to confidently proclaim his identity as the Son of God. And he also calls each one of us to confidently proclaim that he's our Lord, that he is the Son of God for us. And that's a hard task to do, but we know from Peter's story that it is a long process for us to undergo before we can confidently proclaim Jesus as our Lord, Um, before we can really tell other people with confidence that he is everything to us. Um, And that takes Peter a long time. We see in the gospel he says it very confidently, but we know his whole story. We know how he began First, when Jesus first calls him, he's really hesitant. Um, He thinks he's unworthy, but the Lord still asks him, you can be my apostle. Um, And later on, we have this proclamation. But we know that when Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, and during that time, Peter has a hard time proclaiming Jesus as his Lord because there's so much at stake. Um, He even denies Jesus three times. Um, And after the resurrection, the Lord gives him an opportunity to kind of take that back, to re-proclaim his faith in Jesus. Um, This story of Peter gives us um, comfort because we realize in our lives that in many ways we fall short. Um, When opportunities arise for us to share Jesus or for us to share what Jesus has done in our lives, um, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes We fear the consequences of what that might mean, and that's okay. The Lord knows where our hearts are, but he desires to lead us to a more and more confident proclamation of him as our Savior. And I want to look specifically at what was it for Peter in his life that moved him to more full confidence? And going back to the story after the resurrection, Jesus gave him the chance to take back his denials when he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter responded, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus gives him a mission, feed my sheep. So what was it for Peter that helped him to have that confidence? It was time with the resurrected Jesus. It was a meal they, they, said, they had this conversation over a meal at the beach with fish that they had just caught. Jesus gives us, each of us, here at this meal, he gives us a chance to spend time with him. We have a meal with the resurrected Jesus. We have a chance to converse with him. And that time we spend with him is so powerful because that is what is going to move us to be more confident in his work in our lives, more confident when we talk to other people about him. So confident that we can become like St. Paul in the second reading. He says, The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed. Paul had the same story. The only reason he could be confident is because he knew that the Lord stood by me. The Lord gave me strength. And that's why I could share him. That's why I could proclaim him to the rest of those in my life. So as we continue with this Eucharist, with this Thanksgiving meal with the Lord, let's really enter into that time of intimacy with him, that time of communication of being able to receive him in the Eucharist. And as we do so, let's pray for the intercession of Peter and Paul so that we can become like them, 
confident proclaimers of Jesus' work in our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confidently, let us present the needs of the church and of the world to our God, our Father. We pray for the church throughout the world that it will confidently proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all government leaders, especially those of our nation and of our state, that they will fearlessly pursue the justice that the Lord calls them to. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our local parish community, especially those who are sick and suffering the loss of loved ones, that as we look with confidence to the Lord, he will answer all of our needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the deceased in a special way, we pray for Leo Gomez and Rudolfo Anaya, that the Lord will welcome them into his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in a special way for Kevin Slimak on his birthday. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your church gathered on this day. And through the intercession of the apostles Peter and Paul, grant the fullest measure of your blessing upon all the church, that we may witness to your son Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. 
Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world they share one martyr's crown. And therefore with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants among the living and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have died, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Peter said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church.
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for he has made you steadfast in St. Peter's saving confession, and through it has set you on the solid rock of the church's faith. Amen. And having instructed you by the tireless preaching of St. Paul, may God teach you constantly by his example to win brothers and sisters for Christ. Amen. So that by the keys of St. Peter and the words of St. Paul and by the support of their intercession, God may bring us happily to that homeland that Peter attained on a cross and Paul by the blade of a sword. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.